Welcome back. Um, so, a couple days ago, I made progress on getting my version of Stockfish to compile and do so in parity with uh, the official Stockfish uh, release 12. Uh, so, it, it's searching the same number of nodes during a search as the official SF12 does and contains all the commits that are contained in that branch. Um, so presently, if we look at, um, let's see, yeah, we see I'm seven commits behind because they've already started Stockfish 13 development. But if we look at my current commit history, we'll see that my version number is frozen at 12 at the moment. So I haven't yet I guess I don't know if I've frozen a 12 release, but I have the big 1 2 in my repo. So that means I should be trying to freeze pretty soon. So at least it means that uh, until the freeze happens, I'm not intending to take additional commits from this repo, even if they fix things that were broken in Stockfish 12. I want my 12 to have the same. Um, benchmark and other properties that are in the official Stockfish 12. So um, what things could possibly remain for me to do to for me to freeze uh, my version 12? Well there's two things. One, maybe increasing support for uh, variants. So like right now anti-chess is not supported Atomic is not, Crazy House is not, etc. So, like, about half of these are supported, the other half aren't. I don't think this is the most pressing issue. Um, I would like to see greater support for these, but uh, this is hard work. I don't have time for it before making a freeze. Um, maybe for Stockfish 13 I'll get some more of this improved, but right now this isn't my top priority, in fact. Um, my top priority is, well, checking, is there a regression performance-wise? Um, so I guess our thought for the day, thanks to Chuck Cow, thanks to ZSH, is uh, Chuck Norris originally appeared in the Street Fighter 2 video game, but was removed by beta testers because every button caused him to do a roundhouse kick. When asked about this glitch, Norris rep replied, that's no glitch. Anyway, so for the stream, I put together a little build script um, that checks out the old version of Stockfish, compiles it, um, gets the neural network dependency, um, does a, yeah, I'm sorry, here's the compilation step. Um, and then renames the binary, does a mate clean, checks out my master branch as opposed to the upstream master, manipulates the make file to strip a, uh, yeah, so that now instead of all these variants, now we just have these through three check. So all these other variants are not going to be part of that build. Downloads the neural network again because why not? Um, does a compile. Um, uh, instead of doing any of the diagnostic tests, which are probably good ideas to do, but I've done those a zillion times already, uh, just immediately does, like, here's the official stockfish, here's my stockfish, um, yeah, and does a, a benchmark comparison. So that's the plan. I forget what my terminal width is, but this comparison might not look good. We might have to touch this up to like instead of 220 columns. In fact, I can get the number of columns in my terminal. It's um, 157. So let's set this to 157. This stuff doesn't overflow. Um, yeah, let's give this a shot. Um, first, let's check that my repo is in a good state. Yeah, I have some extra files, but I have nothing that's going to break anything. 
All right, let's do the build. Oh, upstream master did not match any files. Um, did not expect that. Um, I guess instead of upstream master, it's upstream space master. Um, oh, it's origin master, of course. Of course. All right, let's try that. All right, so yeah, we're in detached head state, compiling. Um, make clean first. All right, now let's do the build for real. So uh, I'm just establishing whether I can build everything using common build parameters. Um, wait, my J6 make flag is missing. This should build a lot faster than it's building. So I have to figure out why my... Oh, my make flags are not being respected because I'm using bash instead of zsh. Okay. So my z profile is not taking effect. So yeah, let's just stick this j6 right in there. And right in here. Make clean. Let it rip. All right, we should see, there we go, six at a time. And now we wait. The waiting is so real. Um, I mean, I guess I could give you guys, like, here's a little chessboard in the corner for your amusement. I'll just keep that there throughout this stream because there's going to be a lot of compiling and a lot of running stuff. So any character you miss that's in that upper right hand corner um, probably won't be missed. So, yeah, here uh, we can par the run times. So, Origin Master completes in 33.33 seconds. My Master completes in 38.64. So, if you do a little bit of math, 38.64, oh, 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 divided by 3333. So, mine on my machine, um, we have 1.1593, meaning my branch is 16% slower on my computer. Other people have reported a uh, performance dip as much as 33.0%. Here I, have a, I am measuring a 16% slowdown. But that's not the official way for me to measure it. I have a better way to measure it, so we're going to do the better way. Um, So here we verify that you get Stockfish and Stockfish Master. Um, my binary clocks in a three megabytes larger than Stockfish uh, upstream. So um, at this point, um, we're going to move Stockfish Master to Stockfish 12 just so there's no confusion about what that is. That's the official Stockfish 12 build with debugging. I um, should also update my build script here. Do, 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 do. 12. All right. So that wasn't even the point of confusion here. Um, oh right, so I was going to update my build scripts. I've frozen Stockfish 12 at this point. We don't need to do any of this checkout. Um, we don't need to make net. We don't need this build step. We don't need this rename move, etc. 
We don't need to make clean again. We are on the correct branch. We've already done this string replacement. So, yeah, subsequent builds and runs will just be of my fork. So there's the official stockfish. Here's my stockfish again. We'll see 33.42 and 38.54. So again, like somewhere between a 15 and 16% slowdown. But the way that I measure this, um, yeah, what shell scripts do I have? I have a file called Bench Parallel. Um, hang on. That's not in my current directory. That's in my top level directory. So, oh, yeah, I could just run this. Um, okay. This runs the two engines in parallel. Um, hmm. <laughs> I'm confused. Swap the execution order. Yeah, so like this randomly, or rather this alternates. Um, just oh base and here this is whatever the other branch name okay set background equals dark um i think background's already set to dark i still can't read like this oh yeah test okay fine so here's the base and here's the base um that should be fine. Okay. Oh, I'm missing the neural network stuff in the midst of all of this. Um, default depth, uh, let's say classical on both ends. So let's keep the neural network out of all this testing just because we don't need it for this test right now. We can always go back and add it later. So, um, and perhaps I want to parameterize this stuff at some point in the future, but whatever. So I could like specify on the command line which parameters to use. Um, all right, so now if I run my bench parallel, um, let's do two tests between Stockfish 12 and Stockfish. So this is going to run both of them, one after the other. So we're on run number one of two. We're on run of two of two. And we can see which branch is faster and by how much. So here's our results um, for just the standard benchmark positions. A depth of 13 plies. Um, so my test branch has a slowdown. Or how do I read this again? Um, yeah, I have a negative speed up of 15%, which I think accounts for all my chess variants that I added. Um, so if we want a more accurate estimation, we do this for 10 runs. And so like first it runs the official stockfish, um, and then second it'll run mine and then it'll alternate and run mine and then the official and then official and then mine and so forth. So this is what I use for uh, pretty serious performance testing, despite my box not necessarily being the greatest um, for measuring this. If I run enough tests, I can get an accurate enough measurement. Um, so yeah, this keeps track of for uh, the base, how long it took to run the test, and how long it took to run, or, yeah. So this is a number of milliseconds, I think. So, yeah, here we see the base took this number of milliseconds, the test took this number. No, I'm sorry, this is the number of nodes per second. This is the number of nodes per second. Um, so we have an average and a standard deviation, an average and a standard deviation. You have some tricky math to figure out 
the difference and standard deviation of the difference. And um, yeah, so we can see that mine is plainly uh, well, this much worse. Um, so, and if I run more and more tests, we can figure out exactly is it 16%, 15%, 17%, but it's somewhere around there. Um, so, this is in response to criticism from elsewhere that on other people's machines, um, my fork is much slower. And I'm saying with debug mode enabled, using the same BMI2 architecture instructions, this is the performance that I get. Uh, if you're comparing a debug build to a debug build. I've not compared release builds in a very long time, but I, last time I remember we had a similar performance characteristic where mine is not faster. Um, so I'm a, um, my binary, so like here's the Stockfish 12. I'm sorry, here's my Stockfish, multivariant Stockfish 12. Um, here's the official Stockfish 12. Um, so here we observe. Um, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, right, there is no UCI variant parameter in there because their engine can only play chess and 960, whereas mine can play chess, 960, and all this other stuff. Um, so I forget, because it's been forever, how do I improve performance of my thing? How do I even measure where I'm spending all my cycles? such that I have a 16% slowdown. Previously, we had a much greater slowdown than 16%. Upon hearing reports that there was a 30% slowdown on some people's machines, I was deeply concerned. 15% um, still sucks. Like, I still want to improve this, but I've put tremendous effort in the past into trying to improve this and had very little success. And also annoyed other developers by removing their code. Um, so that's why I'm hesitant to open a new issue or reopen a performance issue. Because I don't want to keep removing code. Um, so in this 1867 commits a few lines of code have changed um it's not really super meaningful to compare code it's sometimes more meaningful to just read through some of the code and see like what is my fork doing that's adding complexity and do we need all this complexity um so I think somebody had observed in the move generator, I've got this crazy pattern, which I forget if I've gotten rid of or not. Um, I don't think I removed it. So yeah, I've still got this pattern where um, I'm passing around this template parameter everywhere. And part of the reason for that is so I don't have to pass an additional parameter on my build, on my stack here. So right now, um, things like make promotions do not pass the position into the make promotions function. Um, possibly I should consider doing that. And the way we would know is if I coded it. Uh, passing in the position reference um, like here like we do all the other places if I start passing this into every function where I need it we could observe whether or not this is a speed up um, but yeah okay I think we've established that um, here I'm going to move stockfish over to stockfish master um, so here we've got Stockfish 12 and Stockfish Master, our local on my file system. Um, 
So next I'm going to um yeah, we're just gonna compare master and uh, I haven't named I haven't put a suffix on the default build yet. We're gonna check out a new branch in just a second here. But we're gonna first verify I can reproduce the build and get parity with myself just compiling on master versus compiling on master. Um, yep, 38 seconds, 38 seconds, same number of nodes. Uh, so there's no surprise here. We got, this is the binary we just built, which is exactly the same size as Stockfish Master. Um, so I did, yeah, I did comment out the check out a different branch name thing. Um, get checkout. Um, oh. Um, yeah, I had at some point a branch move gen simple. Um, maybe I could find that. I think I gave up on it. Let's not try to res revive dead code. Uh, so here, because we need, um, nope, uh, ext move. All right, so everywhere we have a function declaration, we're going to require that position parameter. Generate king moves. I already passed the position. Um, uh, so, whoops, this is not a way to get declarations. Um, so, what are my function signatures? These all accept a position parameter. Uh, these all accept one. Okay, so I've changed one function signature, which is not the end of the world. Um, and hopefully it does not by itself greatly impair performance. Um, okay, this is not declared in a header file. This is only consumed within this file. All right. Uh, so yeah, let's go re-implement um, this removal of variant V. For that to work, I'm going to need to go to all the call sites for make promotions and pass in this parameter. POS, POS, there we go. Are there other call sites? No, that's it. All right. Um, so next, I'm going to strip that out of every template declaration, which is going to cause everything to stop compiling because we no longer have this v equals thing that we can check. Um, instead, this is going to be uh, that is anti like that. Um, here, this is going to be instead of extinction, pos dot is extinction uh, instead of two kings. Uh, okay, um, starting from the top of the file again. So this is going to be. Um, No, I swear. At some point, this um, the way the code my was the way my code was laid out made sense at some point in time. It no longer does. Um, because uh, official Stockfish restructured their code. So yeah.
we're going to just rewrite our code to accommodate uh, what I'll call a mismerge from upstream. Um, I was really surprised by how quickly the Stockfish 12 was released. Let me check. Is my mic on? My mic is on. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I thought I checked that already. All right. Uh, v equals equals. All right. And here's another one. Oh, and then here's Crazy House. Um, all right, uh, V equals equals is also used here for night relay. Then there's relay. Okay. What other variants? Oh, race. Okay. Yeah, that's racing kings. Um, are there others? No. These are, all, in the move gen code, these are all the variants that we've looked for. Uh, now there are switch statements on V, so this needs to be pos.variant. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so... Let me see what else I need to look at. Uh, yeah, let's just look at all the places where we're using anti-variant. Okay, so this generate all stanza does not need to be here anymore. Um, so this greatly simplifies code. It reduces the number of branching statements. Um, so, um, wait, is that the only place that generate all that we were passing in that parameter? That doesn't seem right. Okay, so here we no longer need to pass this sort of thing. Um, I can't believe it was that simple to strip out all this. I thought there was a, quite a few more uh, cases where we were saying generate. Um, evidently not. Wait. This should have at least found this. Um, okay, yeah. So I thought there was more like this. There is. So all this needs to go. Um, similarly, all this needs to go. Um... So then here, instead of calling for chess variant to be the first parameter, we're just going to say the color of the player to move. Um, there we go. That should do it. Um, get add move gen that cpp get commit um, remove variant templates from uh, remove variant move uh, simplify variant move generator was the commit message I previously used for this. Get status get re uh, yeah, let's restore the make file. 
Um, so before we start doing more performance testing, we need to check that I have not broken anything. So for that, we need all the variants enabled. Uh, also, let me check one thing. Is uh, Crazy House... No, that's not it. Um, so, oh, is placement is what I was looking for. Definition of is placement already checks if the variant is Crazy House. So that one expression I had confusion about earlier is placement. Um, not here. Here. This, uh, we only need to do is placement check, um, which already consumes is crazy house. Uh, or rather, this should evaluate to the same thing. Um, so is it better or worse style to leave it like this? I don't know. I think the compiler might be able to do some kind of optimization here with this is house and is house, so we can leave it this way. Um, okay, we don't need those outputs. Um, make clean. You cannot spell for life me. Let's build. All right. I'm building all the variants and trying to see if I just broke the move generator. Um, yep, all right, there we go. There's our first compile error, uh, 277. All right, um, uh, where else? 434. I'm not sure if a V uh, global replacement would be a smart strategy or not. Hit, commit, amend, reset. Okay. Let's rebuild. Uh, is the move generator compiling now? Maybe. We'll find out. And if this compiles, um, we can also push this up to the cloud as a branch check if the branch compiles. Um, we could also check performance of this locally while the cloud is doing its own thing. Come on. Let's go, go, go. I mean, I just... Yeah, the test it's doing here is not trivial. So... I should be patient. So how's your day? <laughs> Alright, oh, it's finished. Nice. Um, Alright, and it actually obtained the correct number of positions searched. Um, that's a win in my book. Um, so we'll push that up to the... Um, to GitHub, which will kick off three simultaneous builds. Now, while that's going, uh, let's do a performance test, since apparently... Um, well, hang on. Before I do that, perfed is actually useful to check if I'm generating the correct number of positions from each starting position, or from each position in my suite of test positions. This is what I should have actually been testing before I pushed. But yeah, perfed uh, testing is fine too. Um, now I can chain all these things together. And last time I claimed that I was, and I lied. Um, so yeah, let's chain all these tests together. And see, can we get through all the tests successfully? So first, perfed. Make sure that we're generating. In fact, since this is going to take forever, let's open a browser and look at the concepts that are involved. Um, uh, chess programming wiki. Now, my browser's not cropping correctly, I don't think. 
Um, let me reset my browser crop properties. Nope. Filters. Filters. Good enough. Um, and over here, we're just going to full screen that. There we go. Chess programming wiki. So there's a number of concepts that are involved. Um, one of these is performance testing. Our performance test move path enumeration. So this is a super common technique for verifying that your engine for some set of test positions generates legal moves at a depth of however many moves you want to search deep. Makes the move, generates moves, makes the move, generates moves. Eventually, like uh, in this depth first search, you'll pop your way up. Um, you'll count how many moves got generated, uh, exploring the start position to a depth of whatever. Uh, also, there's a technique for bulk counting. So if you are at the tail of a search tree, um, I don't have a great way to show that. Um, maybe I do. Chess Otron. So opening tree. Perfect. So yeah, if I look for me looking for recent games, fetch data, etc. So here's a search tree. Well, um, mm -mm. I had hoped this tree would be deeper. All right, let's try 40 games. Am I still going to have H? There we go. So say you got this search tree. Um, well, oh, I can scroll left. No, I cannot. Um, so yeah, if you're at the start position, you explore this, you explore this, and you generate moves, and you keep generating moves recursively, and count up the number of positions that, or the number of moves there are in each tail node here. Um, it's like in this position, maybe there's 17 legal moves, in this one, maybe there are 23, and this might be 8. And you just count up in all of the um, leaf nodes of the tree how many positions are or how many moves are generated and if you sum all that up you get the number of um, moves that were generated for the entire thing starting from the whatever your initial position was from which you're generating moves um, um, Oh, this is interesting. Apparently, you can also do this not just for legal moves, but for other kinds of moves, too. That's kind of cool. And yeah, you could get another performance boost by hashing. So if you've searched a position before, you don't need to search it a second time at the same depth. Um, let's see, uh, here's for a, a search depth of five, how many positions you can encounter if this is your first move. Or if this is your first move, this is the number of positions that could be encountered. And so from the start position, after five moves, you can have 4.8 million possibilities. And yeah, this is useful for debugging, especially if your move generator is messed up. Um, and you can actually change the start position and take two different engines and set them at whatever start position you want and compare the node counts and by doing by performing intelligent comparisons you can isolate in what position your move generator is broken so this is one concept um, another concept was um, oh a benchmark um, yeah I don't know not sure how many uh, things are all explained in this chess programming wiki but yeah, there's quite a few common ways to troubleshoot um, an engine being broken or slow or otherwise having strange performance or accuracy characteristics. So see, and now, now this is performing all the tests on all the positions using some debugging tooling that looks for memory leaks. Uh, I didn't write that tooling, but 
It's part of the GNU development tools that ship with every Linux box. I'm sorry, I should say GNU slash Linux. I should be pedantic about this, because like GNU is the awesome part of this. I mean, yeah, Linux is an interesting kernel, but someday GNU herd will be a thing. People will use it. Um, and it'll work with all the development tools as well. Uh, so yeah, we're just waiting on the memory leak checker to test every position and keep track of all the variables and perturb them or whatever it takes to observe and verify that there are no memory leaks. So this is the fourth of four scripts that are tested locally. Oh, uh, the other thing I could check for uh, while that's all going, I did mention that I pushed this branch to the cloud. Well, we could see here this is initiated, well, two automated tests. One on Travis, one on Atveyor. Um, so these are verifying that we can build on Windows and on Linux. This Linux build also include, includes some cross-compilation for OS X um, and maybe other platforms. I don't remember. But yeah, this takes about an hour, which is okay. It's free. Um, I saw that GitLab recently introduced a policy where um, they give you so many free uh, compile minutes per month, whereas GitHub has not yet done such a thing. So it's possible that projects already on GitLab might start migrating to GitHub for free resources. I don't know. GitLab is pretty great, so it makes sense that people would want to pay for it or have their own self-hosted um, instances of it. So it makes sense as a commercial model. Um, GitHub is kind of interesting because you upload your code there and um, Microsoft gets to index it all and index your issues and index everything that you collect. So um, you're giving your information away for free, but this is something I'm already doing because this is an open source project. There might be other information that I might not want to give away for free. Maybe it would still behoove me to move to GitLab, but I don't have a really compelling reason to do so right now because I would get similar performance on that site as I would here. And the privacy concerns, at least that I'm aware of for this, are not um, enough for me to stop at this time. Oh, and yeah, just being able to collaborate on the issue tracker on GitHub is quite useful too. If I were to move to GitLab, yes, it has an issue tracker, but it doesn't have the same user base. So, very well played, Microsoft. Um, offering a free service, although there are like paid tiers, I think. Um, yeah, well played, collecting our info, um, getting all my awesome code for free. Uh, although everybody gets this code for free, but Microsoft might not know where to find this if I didn't put it directly in their repo or inside their web the cloud instance. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I was waiting for this to complete. This already completed. Uh, instrumented testing, okay. And then it just I left this last line in here that just dumps out the number of positions that are encountered. encountered during a benchmark run. Um, so yeah, testing all completed just fine for uh, move generation, etc. Um, I shouldn't need to do any of those other tests because all I changed was just move generation. And I didn't change any of the logic, I just changed the execution of how all moves get executed. So if I want to do a performance test to see if my branch speeds things up, I've checked out my branch. Um, yeah, we're gonna do a build. 
Um, yeah, let's let's do this kind of regression. All right. Um, so we'll do the string replace. Wait, just kidding. Make it clean. I forgot that step. Now we'll do a string replacement on my make file. So now we're only going to support the variants that are built or supported by Leech us. Um, okay, you can see this. Very good. So yeah, this is doing a six job build. Again, this might take a little while to build. So how do I vamp now? I don't know. Um, so here's the branch. If we want to compare the code changes, here's what the code changes look like should look pretty familiar so just to remove this template parameter use my expression here I don't know if this is going to result in more or less branching no idea um, but this might be something worth merging into my version 12 just because we get rid of uh, some overhead and introduce some different overhead like this block is something other developers complained about so I've removed it and ditto here and ditto here. I'm not sure that's going to be any faster because I just moved where these expressions get evaluated, but um, but there are plenty of these branches and quite a few of these could be skipped in many cases. So yeah, possibly this could be a speed up. We'll find out. This is why we test. Um, all right, so um, yeah, we encountered the same number of nodes searched. Uh, the best move is the same, etc. So, like, yeah, all I've changed is the move generator, and I don't seem to have broken it because we searched the same number of nodes. So, next, um, let's check out Bench Parallel. So, you remember earlier I removed the variant parameter here. Let's put it back in. Um, so if we run bench parallel, we want to compare my master branch to my feature branch. Uh, let's start with two runs, make sure that we're anywhere near the same ballpark, and then do a larger number of runs. Um, so my feature branch is 0.003% slower. I'm sorry, it's um, uh, it's 0.3% slower. Um, and this could be a noisy machine, so let's do some more tests. Maybe that's just a very noisy result. So let's do 10 runs. See if that's any better. Um, also, we can change up the number of nodes that we search. Instead of searching a default of 13 plies, maybe we should try something heavier, like, I don't know, 15 or 17 or 19 or 21. Because when, they, when somebody's running an engine, they don't care about these very short bursts of... Um, they care much more about... Uh, performance over a longer period of time than just uh, searching to six and a half moves or 13 ply steep. Yeah, so this has like no performance impact, but it does simplify code, so it still could be worth merging. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry, for that particular test, it has no noticeable impact. Uh, how about instead of 16, 1, 13, let's try 128, 1, and 15. Oh shit, I didn't mean to do a build. Okay, thankfully I don't have a clean step inside my build. Um, so, yep. Let's run... 10 tests at 15 plies instead of 13. Like I said, the waiting on the tests is super exciting. 
Um, so we're, I'm not even submitting to this queue at the moment. We've already looked at the chess programming wiki. Uh, of all these four, these bottom two are the fastest to pass because these have the fewest um, uh, things that they're regression testing. Like this build up here is also includes the memory leak checker. So this job takes longer than the rest. Um, I think this one includes some cross-platform for Android compilation. I don't remember. There's too much to remember. Um, all right. I want my test results. <laughs> I have to be patient. Because I do not have a godly computer cluster. Uh, and even if I did, would I know how to administrate it? I don't know. Maybe I should partner with a university or something who'd be willing to give me free resources or a grant or, I don't know, something so that I could expedite all my development and testing and collaborate with, like... I'm not even sure how I would justify this under a grant proposal, but um, it could be interesting. But yeah, possibly it doesn't make any sense as a grant proposal, and possibly we'd all just end up frustrated by the experience. This way I have full control of things, so this might be better. Alright, so yeah. Now we measure and we see that removing all the templates simplifies the code, and for 15 plies, instead of being a slowdown, it's a speed up. All right. Um, we're going to next try, um, replace 128, 115 with, um, 16, 115. So if we reduce the memory consumption requirements from requiring 128 megs per binary to requiring 16 megs of memory per binary, um, yeah, does this have any measurable impact on performance? I wouldn't expect it to, but I really don't have an expectation. Uh, or, yeah, I don't have any information from which to form my expectation there. Maybe there is a reason that um, searches will perform better with more memory. I don't know. Not just perform better with more memory, but this particular form of the move generator could perform better with more memory. Which, to me, doesn't make sense, but mm, what do I know? Uh, what other open issues do I have? Um, yeah, a lot of stuff. A lot of a lot of stuff. Um... Alright, seven. And possibly I might take the rest of this testing offline, but you get the idea of like, you run the old version and the new version of the code with the same parameters and see which performs better. Um, like, if I have some positive tests here, maybe it's worth submitting my. Well, it's really not worth submitting this to the cluster for verification. So I closed that page earlier, that variantfishtest.org. In theory, I could submit my test here. It would be a waste of their resources, because all I'm changing is the move generator. Wait, why do I have four tabs open? I have this open twice. OK. Um, so yeah. Okay, so yeah, we see that this is less of a, well, I mean, this is within noise, the level of speed up. Um, which means if you were to do many, many more tests, maybe you deserve a greater speed up effect. Um, let's see, number of nodes searched, 908399909658. Curiously, um, number of nodes per second increases when I have less memory. Could be a coincidence. Could be just noise on my machine. Um, so let's take another look. 
no, not at that, at the parallel bench. How about instead of 15 half moves, let's search the depth of 21. Um, let's do that with two runs first, make sure this works. And um, if that works, maybe try it for more and more runs. And this is where I'm saying, like, it probably makes sense for me to take this testing offline. Because I think what I'm going to do next is, instead of doing two runs, do 40. And this is going to take, uh, if you do your math, this will take 20 times longer to execute 40 runs than it would for two runs. So... 40 is probably overkill, actually, since the number of nodes searched per test is so enormous at a depth of 21. Um, yeah, maybe we don't need 40. Maybe 10 is more than sufficient there. Um, we'll see like what the standard deviation is um, when we do a 10 run. My god, this takes forever to search. Uh, there's like 40 positions in the test suite. Um, so, yeah, this takes a while. So there's uh, three tests I need to conduct. With neural networks, without neural networks, and um, with half of the positions using neural networks. All right, so that took about two minutes to complete um, running both my branch with the simpler move generator and the official Stockfish branch, or I'm sorry, my, and my current master branch. Um, yes, yeah, so that took a while. This next test will also take a couple minutes. I don't know why I'm optimistic about it taking faster. That's quite illogical. So yeah, this cluster uh, successfully completed my stockfish without neural network code. So that not just disabling networks um, at runtime, but just building without the network at all did complete successfully on several machines. Um, so that was encouraging just played a quick 1,000 games against itself, and there were no crashes, no timeouts, nothing. Just good, standard, wholesome chess. Um, yeah, so we just need to wait for this to finish there. So... I guess because there's many, many more positions searched uh, per test now at a depth of 21 half moves or 21 plies, um, the standard deviation is going to jump way, way down. Um, okay, so here we can see like this is a 0.1% speed up. It's still within noise uh, if we do two tests. If we do more tests, this might change. Um, so, that's status, um, I think it's justified, even based on this, to merge my simplification, but I should do more regression testing. Um, so yeah, we can see that in both cases, uh, there's a speed up thanks to this, because the branch predictor is performing much better. Um, even though there's more branches, um, they are less frequently encountered. So, yeah, this is quite smart. And the binaries should be a bit smaller. I should check that. Uh, yeah, this is actually a reduction in the binary size as well because we don't have any switch statements anymore and not, not passing around template parameters. So, nice. Um, right. So, yeah, let's do a test. Oh, well. Um, so this is still within noise. If even doubling 
the number of nodes searched should get us out of noise, but let's be super generous and run this test 10 times. So each test run is going to be, um, uh, I could show you what the positions are that are tested. Positions that are tested are these. So this position, this position, etc. All these positions up here, plus some table-based positions, uh, plus some chest 960 positions. All these are evaluated at a depth of 21 half moves. So that's what's going on at the moment. As me making sure I have not introduced a regression. Also testing, is my move generator faster? Also, I'm being an idiot. Um, I don't need to do this kind of test. There's a better test I can perform. This is the idea I was looking for. Instead of, um, yeah, this is not at all what we need. Um, let's take this depth of five. Um, except instead of doing a, so this is going to use the default positions, instead of doing depth here, how many times are this, okay. Yeah, let's just test the move generator. Duh. Um, so yeah, there's no need to test anything other than the move generator. There is a benchmark parameter for just test the move generator, so. Now we're going to do that at a depth of 5 and see if how this performs. Um, I forget what the default benchmark um, perfed thing is. What's the depth we typically search at? Oh, okay. Runs a perfed 5 on default positions. Nice. Well, no, I'm sorry, this is not the default. This is specified here. So I guess we don't have a concept of a default number uh, depth at which we normally do perfed, but five seems fine. I could increase that to six. It might take longer. Uh, yeah, I should probably do a six in addition to a five, just to see how much noise I can remove from my test results. Because uh, this is completing very quickly. Um, yeah, of course it makes sense. This is the way you want to compare move generation performance is by testing just the move generator. Um, there's no need to complicate things with searching everything else. Um, so yeah, I have two thoughts. One is that I could search at a greater depth. Two, well, yeah, actually it doesn't really matter. Yeah, five is pretty good, but two is I could just do a lot more tests, which also remove or cancel out some of the noise effects. Um, so I am vamping here. Is my bot still online? Um, so we see, like, there's always Leech STV. Uh, here's my bot. It last played against somebody here. Um, I guess the person had to go. Let's see, we can measure, um, performance in recent games. We can measure this by date, limiting things to blitz, limiting things to games where it played the same color against similar strength opponents. So apparently recently it's been on a roll, at least as black, against similar strength opponents. Previously it was not on such a roll, so I think when I switched from BMI2 to a generic Linux modern instruction set, I lost all my bitmask vectorized instructions, which had a performance hit, and now it's got all the performance back in the build, because we've stabilized things. 
or I'm now producing a stable binary. So, nice. Um, so yeah, I guess this 7 to 4 drop here, this is the impact of the neural network. And um, optimizing some my code with it, I guess. I don't know. Well, I guess, no, I start putting neural networks in the cloud right around here. So yeah, I guess this 18 to 7, this... Um, so what this is measuring is the number of hundredths of a pawn that are lost per move. So it's doing three times better in terms of accuracy as measured by itself. Um, all right, so yeah, searching, ju um, just testing the move generator in isolation. Uh, this is not within noise. This is indicating that... Um, if we just test the move generator all by itself, this underperforms. That's interesting. I don't like that result, but... Um, but that is worthy of note. Um, all right, let's do a crazy thing and try just a five-ply search. Um, hang on. Yeah, this should complete instantaneously. Okay, so we should see some sort of performance characteristic there. Let's try this for 40. 40 runs of just 5-ply search. Um, so this is a pretty atypical use of the engine. Normally, you'd want to search deeper than five half moves. Um, so, yeah, this is still within noise. Um, you could do more and more uh, there. So, 16, 1, 5. Uh, let's try 128. Uh, yeah, if we boost the amount of memory that's consumed by the engine, does this have a performance impact? I don't know. This might have some impact in that loading the engine could be slower, which could low, uh, which could impact performance somehow. Like one engine could be causing interference on the operating system against the other engine. If we require that much memory to be allocated, so I don't know whether that's a real thing or not. Um, so yeah, let's see if we try instead of that. Um, 16.1. So this is the test I wanted to do. This test will take forever, um, but will give me the best possible result. So let me first, instead of doing this for 40 runs, do it for two. Um, This will take a while. So. No, that's good to see, though. Like, recently, um, my engine's been playing quite well. In the last week, performance has been like this. In the last two weeks, it's been like that. So, that's pretty incredible. In the last month, this is. I don't know what this point was. I don't know. Maybe that's just noise. Maybe all of what I'm impressed about is something I should not be so impressed about. Um, but yeah, against opponents of similar rating, uh, it's doing okay. And here's some positions of it playing against opponents of similar rating, which are all bots. Um, so yay. Um, yeah, here's its rating history over the last month. Uh, ever since I put the vectorized instructions back in, it's doing better at uh, one minute chess than it used to be doing. Um, what's this about down here? Chess 960. I mean, sometimes I'll play against it and 
get a free lesson. I don't know how it manages to keep a rating of uh, 1,787, but somehow it did that. What's this green line down here? This is Ultra Bullet, I think. Bots are now forbidden from playing Ultra Bullet because it costs, causes too much load on the server. Uh, with the red line, anti chess twenty one seven seven. Okay, the green line here, horde. Interesting. So yeah, hopefully some of these lines will trend upward. If not, I'll have to play against it to seed it a bit, so other players are willing to play it. Um. Uh, yeah, we'll see. There's a lot to learn, but I think move generator I've written now in isolation performs worse but in context performs better because you're not wanting to generate all the moves all the time it's the generation of subsets of moves that's performing better now whereas overall move generation is slower but a generation of just moves to escape check and that sort of thing is now faster and the code base is slimmer, so I can't complain about that. Um, what I do like about simplifying this move generator is that I've accounted for other people's feedback so they can stop complaining about the way I wrote my code. Because now I wrote it the way they tell me to write it. And so, but no, it's simpler now, code-wise. There's less to worry about. Um, so yeah, this performance impact is within noise, again. Because um, one time it performs slightly better, one time it performs slightly worse. Um, so I could reduce the amount of noise by doing quite a few tests. Uh, what would a typical use of this engine be? So if somebody were to go open an analysis board and input some moves. Rather, this is not how people would use it. People would use this by looking at games. Okay, here's a game I played. Here's an analysis board, just random position. I would search this typically to a depth of, well, that's checkmate. Uh, how about this? Here's a position. So I typically go to a depth of 22 plies. So this is a common use of the software is depth 22 which is quite similar to what I'm doing with depth 21. So yeah, this is the correct test to perform. We're gonna do 40 runs of it without neural networks. This is gonna take uh, two minutes times 40 runs. This might take two hours to complete or so. Um, so I'm not sticking around for this. I don't expect you to stick around for this. We'll just leave the test running. Let's see how it performs. Um, I've run out of things to vamp on. But yeah, at the end of the test, we'll have some sort of result. And if the result is um, positive or if the result is neutral, uh, then I will be happy merging this code simplification. Actually, I could, there is a way I could submit this to the fish test cluster. So after I have finished my test, the next correct thing to do would be to take this branch, 12 without neural network, or something like it. So it strips out all the neural network code um, and compare that. Um, we're going to somehow, I don't know, um, this is going to be move gen simple no neural network. We're going to have it play chess with some bench number this is a simplification, and yeah, we'll submit this to the cloud. So once I've produced on my PC that this is faster, slower, whatever, we can do a regression test 
using these bounds and or a simplification test and if this test performs positively here um, then we commit the change so this will take a long long time um, it is encouraging here and possibly when I submit this like the reaction of the cluster maintainer be like what the heck you don't need to do this we've been over this before Dan in fact yeah we have so it's fine for me to just test things locally uh, I don't need to like if this is functionally equivalent and it is there's no need to upload this to the cloud to test it on everybody's machine um, plus I'm not at risk of breaking anything here um, so the other test I need to run is I'm running a simplification test for standard chess I also need to run a test for all the variants and make sure that everything's fine there too but um, in a way that test is already being run like this doesn't crash on variant execution and we can see like here this noise this uh, test time is quite noisy uh, 24 minutes 22 41 and this is still going if we compare this to um, previous build uh, do, 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 do. Right, here's the previous build 25 minutes 25 44 and 47 so with my code changes in place this is like the same performance 41 minutes versus 44 um, I don't know that like I could trust this as a way of testing is my engine slower or faster this is just used for is uh, my engine uh, having a memory leak or something like that like there's so many other constraints on this Travis network that it's not the best for performing a regression test or performing a simplification test um, this is not a way to test for speed up although like we see that it does build faster and stuff like that um, so maybe there's some merit to that because then this is so much faster maybe I don't know I have no idea it's kind of encouraging though that we have three positive results here and this one is the most positive of them all um, after this completes maybe I do want to rerun all these builds to check um, this morning if I can get the same performance 26 minutes 25 44 or 47 if like this executes all the tests that much faster that could be another reason to speed things up yeah so I vamp forever but this test is going to take a very long time this test will outlive however much vamping I can do um, so we do need to wrap it up there I'm glad to see this does perform or rather this so far there's no indication of a regression so all I'm stalling for at this time is uh, for this job to complete and once it completes without an error um, yeah then I think um, I've verified that I've not caused a regression um, there might be a performance hit somehow but at least I haven't broken anything if all these tests are successful so yeah I don't need to submit this to the cluster that'd be overkill that wouldn't teach us anything we don't already know or can't already find out readily enough um, so what we have established is that this move gen simple however much it improves like if it's less than one percent like I'm assuming the improvements gonna be somewhere within noise um, even as we increase the number of nodes that we use for testing or number of test runs we do so this run was done at a depth of like five which is pretty atypical um, 
we saw this improvement was um, 0.2%. I expect less than a 1% improvement from my change. And we already observed here that if we have if we're allocating lots of memory, that uh, makes the test very noisy. I guess one other test I could run after this. Right now I'm running this with um, 16 megabytes of memory per instance or per engine. I could increase that to 128. Let's see if having more memory somehow affects performance because like people will run stockfish using lots of memory um, but now by default all these tests they're done in Travis and elsewhere use 16 megabytes because we aim to support that sort of architecture too all right so uh, yeah this completed in 45 minutes this completed yesterday in 47 Let's redo this, see this morning with this morning's hardware, etc. Do we get the same performance? Is this going to take 47 minutes uh, for the, um, this build and 45 for this one? If so, like that would be another data point to support my argument that like this code simplification, which makes things easier for me, also makes things easier for the engine. Um, hate to be doing this right on the cusp of the release, but um, I'm not sure where else to turn in terms of trying to find performance improvements. I guess I could go back to the Lee Chess Discord and say, hey look, I merged your idea. What other things do you want me to try to tune here? But um, that's not super smart. Um, this is why I beg for contributions, although, like, despite this being one of the easier chess projects to contribute to and compile and all this, um, it's still extraordinarily complex, so, um, yeah, maybe I should simplify this parameter away. I don't know. A lot of these parameters could maybe be simplified away. I think for anti-chess it makes sense to have a move horizon that's not 50 because um, anti-chess games end in under 50 moves quite a few times. Uh, yeah, I forget how I tuned these and came up with these numbers, but these could be worth retuning at some point. Um, maybe before a freeze, I don't know. Maybe after a freeze. My, yeah, those numbers don't matter actually. These uh, right now I'm just looking for what code can I remove to speed things up somehow. Um, are there any candidates that are obvious for removal? I don't care so much about performance of variance. I care a lot about performance of standard chess. Um, so I don't know where to go to try to improve that. Um, Probably the key insights will come just by running lots and lots of tests and keeping track of the test results in an organized fashion. And I guess during code review, somehow maybe you could point out, like, ooh, we have extra code that we don't need. That could happen. Um, that's hard to say. Because there's just so much code. And removing any of it Oh, I'm sorry, the other thing that I could test is compiling with and without various feature flags and see which features have the greatest performance impact. Um, so that's another possibility. Um, yeah, it'd be great if I could remove some stuff like this. If, like, racing kings were defined by setting up the board differently than it is, that, that'd be great. But that's not how things are. Um, or if Crazy House didn't require me to define all this other stuff, yeah, that'd be great. Um, maybe there's something in the search engine, or search heuristics, somewhere. There might be something obvious, where I'm doing an if def 
do my special stuff and maybe there's a performance like here this is essentially commented out because Lee Chess's build does not include this feature but there might be some features here that do have a measurable performance impact um, I have no idea maybe I should convert this to a switch statement I don't know um, hard to say Maybe some of this needs to be changed. Anti-chess, loser's chess, all these branches, like the branch predictor will do very well over time, recognizing that most of these branches do get skipped 99% of the time. Um, yeah. Oh, here's another thought. Maybe eventually I could simplify some of this away. Right now this is quite valuable, but maybe I could change this into an array or something else that might perform ever so slightly faster. Again, the branch predictor will do quite well, but changing this from a branch to an array might help. Um, or maybe just removing it altogether. Maybe we don't need it anymore. I don't know. Maybe we should convince the uh, official Stockfish developers to change this back to a 256. Um, maybe that would help them with their performance. If we call that a simplification, changing this to a 256 and changing this to a whatever. Because, like, divide by 256 is a right shift 8 operation. Anyway, yeah, I'm not sure what else we could do to try to tune this faster. Um, we could beg for ideas, but really it's going to take many experiments. Um, and I don't have the hardware for it. I don't have, like, the mental wherewithal for it. i just tracing where is all the performance loss. That's hard to say. Because pieces of the engine often do not perform in isolation. Really the only thing that does perform in isolation is the move generator, and that's what I'm fixing right now. So, yeah, this will take like an hour to finish. We'll see how that does. Yep, there was my attempt to vamp, but yeah, I have successfully vamped in like our move gen simple completed in 45 minutes. We'll keep an eye on this, um, and probably I'll end up merging my performance improvement. We'll see. Either way, uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.